Hey, happy Tuesday, fifth graders. Well, as you know from yesterday, um, we are going to be talking a lot this week about volume and area and perimeter, but in particular, volume. Now, if you did not do the Nearpod lesson, you need to do it because that was our review of everything that we've learned already in fifth grade about perimeter, area, and volume. If you can't click on the link, you can still get to it. But when you put in the web address for Nearpod, you must go nearpod.com. And here's the important part. Put that backslash student. It'll get you there, and then it'll say join, and you put the code in. I left you the code yesterday. So let's get on to today's topic. So today, what I want you to do, um, I hope that you have already gone through and done your uh your daily review quiz. It, you did have a perimeter question on it. Um, and so after that, I want you to finish watching this video and um, get some expert knowledge on volume. And then I want you to do your quizzes assignment. Please, boys and girls, do not try to figure out volume in your head. That if you fail an assignment, I'm going to contact your parents and let them know that you need to meet with me. So take the time to work out our problems. All right, let's do a little bit of talk about volume. So as we learned yesterday, volume is determining the number of cubic units it takes to totally fill a three-dimensional object. A three-dimensional object is an object that has three dimensions, like length and width. And height. Now, in fifth grade, you don't have to figure out how much volume a, a swimming pool contains, but this is what you're going to be able to do eventually in life. So in fifth grade, we start off with, with cubes and rectangular prisms. Now, if I want to find the volume of this Pringles box, what I'm trying to really figure out is how many cubic units it would take to totally fill this box from front to back and all the way to the top with no spaces and no overlaps. Now, I've got some cubes here. And I could, if I wanted to count and figure out volume of this box, I could actually start to fill it with these cubes connecting to each other. But you know what? That's kind of hard to do when we've got 10 or 12 problems or we're trying to figure out how much um, soil it will take to fill up a planter like I showed yesterday. So we have an easier way to do this. We need three dimensions. Okay. When we do volume, we need to find a length. We need to find a width. And we need to find a height. Now, the tool that I'm going to use to find the volume of this Pringles box, I'm going to use a measuring tape. It's just, it's just like a ruler, but it's more flexible. And it's what I had available. Okay, So I'm going to be finding um, the volume in cubic inches today. So I'm going to be measuring and finding out. You know, There's nothing on this box that tells me the length or the width or the height. So I have to find that out so I can determine the volume. So when I do this, first I'm measuring the length here. I'm going from left to right, and I find that it is 15 inches, okay? Now, my numbers can get really big. So the length is 15, okay? Now, I need the width. How wide is it? How far does it go back this way? So I'm going to come back over here, if you can see what I'm doing, and I'm just going to turn the box sideways for you so you can see that I'm measuring the width. The width is 9 inches. So I'm going to record that. Now, because this is a three-dimensional object, I need that third dimension. I've got the length, I've got the width, and now I need the height. So I'm going to measure it. I find that the height of this box is also 9 inches. Now, I'm ready to determine the volume. Okay. Now I have to have that skill. This is why one of the reasons we learn to multiply, and we learn to multiply big numbers, because in order to find volume or area, we have to be able to multiply big numbers. Okay? So if you need a multiplication chart, let me let my dog in here, uh, go ahead and get one. That's okay. I'm not testing you on your multiplication facts today. I'm testing you on can you find volume. Okay? So I'm going to bring in my chart. Now that we know the dimensions of that, I'm ready to determine the volume 
of this Pringles box. So I'm just going to scoot this over. Sorry, I hope I don't make anybody dizzy by moving the camera. All right, so I'm ready to do it. We can see up here, just like uh, we learned yesterday, we to find the volume. We're going to now put this into a PEMDAS problem to make it a little easier. Okay, so I'm going to write down the length, which was 15. And I'm going to write down the width, which was 9, and the height that was 9. And now I'm going to follow our formula. It says first multiply the length times the width. So that's what I'm going to do. I've got to know how to do this. And then I'm going to take that and I'm going to multiply it by the height. So the first thing I'm going to do, this is why I say you can't do this in your head. I've got to do 15 times 9. So I'm going to do, it's a little awkward to write here, but I want to stay on camera. I'm going to do 15 times 9. This is going to give me the length times the width, which we also call, guys, as you move into sixth grade, the area of the base, the bottom of this, okay? So we're going to find the area or space of the base, the bottom. We find that by doing length times width. Five times nine is 45, so I'll put down the five and regroup the four. One times nine is nine, plus four more is 13. So now I know the area of the base, or the length times the width times the width part of this, is 135. So I'm going to just come up here and keep this nice and neat for you. I'm going to write down 135. But according to my PEMDAS here, I still have to do this third step. I have to times it by 9. So now I have the last step in my problem. Remember, volume is three steps. Length times width and then times the height. I don't know 135 times 9 in my head, so I'm going to write it down again. You have to do some work, okay? So 135 times 9. 5 times 9 is 45. I put down the 5 and regroup a 4. 3 times 9 is 27, plus 4 is 31. So I put down the 1 and regroup the 3. 1 times 9 is 9, plus 3 more is 12. Okay, so the volume is 1,215, but because this is a three-dimensional shape, I'm going to write it as inches cubed with a three, a three-dimensional shape. So it's 1,215 cubic inches. So it would take me, if I had one, one cubic inch blocks to put in there, it would take me 1,215 of them to totally fill that box. That's what volume is. Okay? Now, the next thing that I want you to do before you go to practice is I want you to watch the video, the wrap about volume. Watch it and see if, and don't just be silly with it. Actually think about what it's telling you to do. It's telling you to do everything that I did here. It's just more fun. Okay, after that, I want you to start on your quizzes. I'm not going to give you very many problems um, because you also have your eye station. Remember your eye station math. You have to do 40 minutes a week. I don't care if you do 20 minutes on Tuesday and 20 minutes on Thursday or if you decide to say, hey, uh, Ms. Cole doesn't give us any work on Fridays and I finished everything else. I'm going to do 40 minutes on Friday. That's your choice, but you need to get that part done. Please know that I miss you guys all the time. I wish we were in uh, class together, and I want you to do the best that you can this week, and I'll be in contact. Remember, anytime that you need me, you can contact me at my conference time by clicking on Conferences. 5D, you are at 9.30, and I changed my days this week. Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 5C, you are at 11 on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And 5A, you can connect with me at 3 o'clock on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. If you need help any other time than that, please text me. Send me a dojo. I'll be happy to meet with you. Bye, guys.